we are going to discuss about the attachments and relations of a typical cervical vertebra. There are certain ligaments and muscles that are attached to these vertebrae and we are going to discuss these in detail. We have two ligaments that are attached to the body. On the anterior surface, we have the anterior longitudinal ligament. The anterior longitudinal ligament is attached to the anterior surface of the body. Whereas the posterior longitudinal ligament, it is attached to the posterior surface of the body. So it moves on like this. It is attached here, the posterior longitudinal ligament, whereas this is the attachment site for the anterior longitudinal ligament. These ligaments, they are attached at the upper and lower borders. They are attached to the upper and lower borders. Both the ligaments, the anterior longitudinal ligament and the posterior longitudinal ligament. They are attached to the upper and lower borders of the body. On the posterior surface, of the body there are two foramina. These foramina serve as a passage for basi vertebral veins. Basi vertebral veins through these two foramina. On each side of the anterior longitudinal ligament, the vertical part of the longus coli muscle it is attached to the anterior surface. So here we had the anterior longitudinal ligament and on each side on each side we have the vertical part of the longus coli muscle attached to the anterior surface of the body the longus coli muscle is a muscle of the neck the upper borders and the lower parts of the lamina they provide attachment for ligamentum flavum Ligamentum flavum is attached to the upper borders of the lamina and the lower parts of the lamina. Then we have foramen transversarium. We have foramen transversarium. And this foramen is in the transverse process and it acts as a passage for the vertebral arteries, vertebral veins, and a branch from the inferior cervical ganglion vertebral arteries, vertebral veins, and a branch from inferior cervical ganglion. The anterior tubercle of this transverse foramina, as you can see here, this is the anterior tubercle, right here. This is the anterior tubercle, right here. The anterior tubercle. The anterior tubercle, it gives origin to scalaneus anterior, longus capitis, and oblique part of the longus coli. The costal transverse bar. This is the costal transverse bar, right here, as well as right here. This costal transverse bars, they have a groove. This groove, it is grooved by the anterior primary rami. Of the corresponding cervical nerves. So the cervical nerves they pass through these costal transverse grooves. Then we have the posterior tubercles right here. As you can see this is the posterior tubercle and as well as right here the posterior tubercle. These posterior tubercles they give origin to scalaneus medius, scalaneus posterior, levator scapulae, the splenius cervices and the longissimus cervices as well as iliocostalis cervices. These are the muscles that are attached to the posterior tubercle. Moving on to the spine, the spine it gives origin to the deep muscles of the back of the neck. This is the spine and well this is a notch right in the spine. This notch is an attachment for ligamentum nuci and also it gives origin to the deep muscles of the back of the neck the interspinalis semispinalis thoracis and cervices spinalis cervices and multifidus so these are the muscles that are originated 
from the spine of the cervical vertebra.